afternoon, Friday afternoon performances, you're in for a special treat. Do you realize this is the four-time world's champion, only four-time world's champion, yeah. <laughs> in traditional panel. Right, even Liberace. <laughs> this guy's even got Liberace. But seriously, he's no stranger to Florenda. We're very happy to have him back. And I want to get, please give a nice welcome to Adam Go through the history of music 
tell you the stories behind the songs along the way. But I'm going to leave the ragtime behind a little bit uh, and then get into early jazz pretty quickly since this is the Glenn Miller Festival. Uh, but ragtime, of course, was the first truly original American popular music. And all the other styles we know and love came out of ragtime in one way or another. Uh, in the very earliest days, ragtime and blues were very similar. And so the blues were pe played more up-tempo for dancing. And I'm going to play two pieces for you now by the greatest jazz piano player ever to come out of New Orleans, Jelly Roll Morton. Oh, yeah. And so uh, this is, in fact, his first published piece from 1915. This is the original Jelly Roll Blues. <laughs> what you call a stomp. He invented that style of music, and it's not very complicated. It's just because it made people want to stomp their feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is called Grandpa's Spells. And if you listen closely in the third part of the piece, Grandpa will have some spells. <laughs> Here we go.
All right, Grandpa spells. Uh, and now two pieces by the man who's called the Dean of Stride Piano. And, or, well, sort of the Dean of Jazz Pianists. Stride was uh, an early form of jazz, developed on the East Coast, primarily played by black piano players in New York and so forth. And his name is James P. Johnson. Now, if you don't know that name, uh, I guarantee you will know one of the pieces that he wrote. And I'll play that in a minute. But first, I'm going to do uh, a piece that James P. Johnson wrote that was only ever issued on player piano roll. And so he made many great roles for QRS, the player piano music company. And uh, this is a true syncopated waltz, an early jazz waltz called Eccentricity now by James P. Johnson. Or Eccentricity. <laughs>
you will know one of his songs. And this takes back supposedly as far as 1912 or 13, when Jimmy Johnson was playing the piano in a nightclub in New York called the Jungles Casino. And there were a whole bunch of dancers that had come up from the south. And supposedly he wrote many tunes for them. There were originally about a dozen of these tunes. But there was one in particular that the dancers loved and they made him play over and over again. And about 10 years later, 1923, James P. Johnson was working on the Broadway show Running Wild. And he used this tune and he named it after the town down south where all the dancers had come from, which was Charleston. <laughs> so here is the original Charleston, the way it was done in 1923. <laughs> James P. Johnson, and uh, now he was not only a band leader, but a wonderful composer. I bet you'll know his songs. I'm talking about Duke Ellington. Yeah. And so uh, I do a medley of four of his songs. You're going to get to hear four of them. First, Mood Indigo. That might be my favorite. Don't Get Around Much Anymore. Uh, solitude, sometimes known as In My Solitude. And then we'll wind up with one that he didn't actually compose, but tune that he made very famous called Take the A Train. Oh, yeah, okay. And so here's my two Kellington method.
string and a whole bunch of other beautiful Duke Ellington medleys. Uh, melodies. Melody, medley. Two different things. Uh, I'm going to do another medley for you. This time, two pieces by a composer whose name you might not know, but I think she was brilliant. Her name was Dana Sweets, and she became known as the Girl Gershwin. Starting in the early 1930s, actually her first tunes came out in the late 20s, uh, but these are from the 30s. Uh, the first one is called Jazz Nocturne, and it later had lyrics added to the tune, and it became known as My Silent Love. But this is the original instrumental piano version, and I'll follow that immediately with one of Suisse's biggest hits from 1934, You Ought to Be in Pictures. Uh, perhaps you'll recognize that too. Here's two pieces by Danny Sweet's Jazz Nocturne, followed immediately by You Ought to Be in Pictures. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going to close the first half of the concert uh, here with the next tune, and then we'll take about 15 minutes of intermission. I do have CDs, sheet music for sale in the lobby. I'd love to not have to take it home with me on the airplane. And, uh, if anybody still has CD players anymore. And uh, I will come back in the second half and do even more uh, Glenn Miller style big band music. So be prepared for that in the second half. In the meantime, here is my big long arrangement of St. Louis Blues, written by W.C. Handy, the father of the blues. I started out playing it in ragtime the way it was originally done in 1914. And uh, the earliest blues tunes really were more like rags. They just had a few more blue notes in them. And then I'll even throw in two choruses uh, and play it like a march, the way Glenn Miller did. The St. Louis Blues March. And then wind up with some authentic boogie woogie piano. So here's the St. Louis Blues. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you very much. Well, as I mentioned, there were a lot of imitators of Boogie Woogie piano music. By World War II, Boogie Woogie had become truly one of the most popular styles in the country. And almost as much as ragtime, it is America's forgotten music. Uh, but I want to play for you a song. Since this is the Glenn Miller Festival, a famous big band era song, introduced by the Andrews Sisters in a terrible movie called Buck Rivals, starring Adam Costello. This is the famous Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy with a little extra real piano boogie in the middle of it. So Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy from Company B. Not A, you see, B. <laughs> So this year, I chose a beautiful ballad from the movie Orchestra Lives. Oh. And I'm going to make a medley out of two of the songs from the same movie. First, At Last, yeah. which uh, this will be the first time I've ever played it. Uh, it was later revived by Ray Anthony, who's still living. He's the last living member of Glenn Miller's orchestra. He's over 100 years old. And uh, then the gorgeous 
Alan Serenade in Blue. Two songs from orchestra lines. At last, and Serenade in Blue.
George's melodies. They don't write them like that anymore. No, uh, I was just realizing on the way here that Harry Warren wrote a number of the songs for the Glenn Miller movies. He wrote both of those and some more of the songs I'm going to play later. Uh, he was equally as good, in my opinion, as Gershwin and Cole Porter, but his name is not as well remembered. Uh, but I'm not going to play those next. Next, we're going to do the Glenn Miller Standard, uh, first recorded in 1938. Later, a big hit, a million seller in the early 1950s for my friend Johnny Maddox. He had a piano instrumental record of this song, Dot Records in the 50s. It was a big hit. Here is In the Mood.
Midnight Serenade. Well, I mentioned the great movie songwriter Harry Warren, and I'm going to play two songs for you now that he composed. First one is written for the movie The Harvey Girls, with mm -hmm. Judy Garland, 1946, and it won the Academy Award that year for Best Song. On the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe. Yeah. And the second song was written for the movie Sun Valley Serenade with Glenn Miller two years earlier, but it, strangely enough, it did not win the Academy Award. I forget which song did that year. Chattanooga Choo Choo. So here's my two big train songs On the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, and Chattanooga Choo Choo. Composers, Tom Breyer, 
who is from Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. Look him up on YouTube if you've never seen him. And this is his famous piece called, uh, well, at least it's famous amongst ragtime people. <laughs> uh, but he's, he's also very popular on YouTube. And this tune is called Razor Blades. Mm -hmm. 